This top is so tight. Good afternoon, South Africa. Welcome to Afternoon Express, yes. live on SABC3, where yes. the stage is yours. Look yes. at you. I'm feeling you myself look today. Gorgeous. Thank so, you. I mean, today's Thursday, but I feel like you're dressed for Friday. It's got it to the weekend, so I'm warming it's myself up. It's got it to the weekend, hey? You know. I see you, girl. <laughs> so having your dreams become a reality is something that most people don't see in their lifetime. And sometimes it takes a lot of endurance and tenacity to stick it through. And I guess today was forced to put her dreams on hold. And has since then come full circle, becoming one of the most diverse actresses in South Africa. It's none other than Dawn Tandega King. We also meet it's Unati and Utalita Sotashe, the founders of Dia Mzanzi, which is a South African-based lifestyle street fashion brand. They'll be showing their uh, designs later on in the show, though, as well. Yeah, I saw some of the models wearing mm. some of their designs earlier, and I just thought, no one is leaving the building with those clothes because I want all of them. Yes, and they're so <laughs> feminine, can't wait. They are beautiful. So remember, you can hit us up on social media and tell us what quality or talent you have that you wish you could explore more of. Tweet us at Afternoon Chat using the hashtag Afternoon Express or pop over to our Facebook page and leave us a post. Now, it's hard to ignore the fierce power behind Don Tandega King's performances. She is the recent recipient of the Simon Babunu Award for Best Actress in 2016. And that is just one of her many accolades. Yeah, absolutely. She recently started co-hosting the Good To Go Breakfast Show on KZN radio station Vuma FM and has shared and so starred in various plays among the most acclaimed playwrights, proving that she was born for entertainment. <laughs> passport. <laughs> I can't passport. Wow, you are an extraordinary actress. You just want I just want to watch you and watch you and watch you. You have such a beautiful presence. Welcome to The Loft. Lovely to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Finally, I've been waiting for an opportunity to sit down with you and just have a chat. Yeah. I feel like it's uh, I've I feel like I've known you forever and especially growing up watching Uzalo now being on its fourth season. That's incredible. Mm. And this role truly did catapult you into the limelight. How was it like working on that production? Well, we started in 2014 because it, it I think it TXed in Feb 2015. But when we started, we were just excited to be a part of something new, a uh, part of something that was shot in KZN. For the first time, something yeah. was being produced in KZN. So that was the, um, the, the core of our excitement. We were not prepared for what happened <laughs> afterwards. We were not prepared for Uzalo to be the most watched. Um, uh, soapy in South it's Africa. Amazing, we, yeah. we were not prepared for any of that. So wow. it's been a roller coaster, but it's been very exciting. I mean, when you're saying that you were not prepared, it's clear that it has changed your life yeah. and changed many dynamics in your life, yes. right? What are some of the challenges and excitement that brought with it personally for you? That I, I cannot just go out uh, in and my do your thing. And barefoot and <laughs> buy bread. No, I honey, can't. You're... Like, I, I have to mind what I look like <laughs> <laughs> because I've got the Bantubazotini syndrome mm. because if you look out of sorts, then, you know. What would they say? You know, yeah. um, but also I've got kids. I've got two teenagers that will never allow me to step out looking shabby. Yeah, <laughs> so. I mean, the teenagers are themselves, like, I'm not going anywhere with you looking like that, yes. Mom. Yes. 
Yes, right? so they are my moms. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's incredible. So we, me and you share a lot in common, but one of the main things is that we kind of found ourselves here after a long stretch in corporate. You were in corporate for over 10 years before getting that big break. Yes. How, we've already touched on how your life has changed, but what did that big break mean to you? Look, when I, when I quit corporate, it was because I actually had had enough. Because I think that was when, during the time I was in corporate, that's when I suffered a lot from depression. Mm. Because there was this, uh, you know, tug, uh, of war. tug of war inside of me. This energy was not being expressed. This, this energy that needed to do its yes. thing was not doing its thing. So um, I think I was, I was, I was in a good job. I'm grateful I had that opportunity. I worked for a great company. Wow. Um, but I, I am a creative, and that's who I am first. That's amazing. Yes. That's amazing. So when I quit in 2010, it was not easy, but I knew exactly what I wanted to do when I quit. Mm. So did you quit first before you landed Uzalo? Yes. Did you just jump on, a, like, on faith? I decide, I you know quit. what, I'm going to pursue my mm. dream. I quit in 2010. And I spent an entire year at home, uh, 2011. My mm. first break was on Inkaba in 2012. Wow. So that, that was my first break on television. So by the time Uzalo came, I had had training to be on set, to be on television, to not be scared of the cameras. Because I am a thespian. I'm, I'm theater first yes. before television actress. Wow. So What an extraordinary journey. But you're also a musician. An indigenous musician. Yes. Mm. That came with my calling. Um, okay. I, I used to sing in the choir at church like everybody else, I guess. Yes. But when my calling came in 2009, it, it came with music. So as I was going through my initiation period, mm. I would always just have songs in my ears that would drive me insane up until I would press record on the phone and start singing. Wow. And then the song would kind of have its life and leave me alone. So I've got, I think I, I perform a total of 10 songs when I perform. All original, all came in the same way. That is amazing. That so is you've never so just sat down with a pen and just... Never. That's why I always say I can never claim any of those songs to be mine. They come from the other side. But I'm so glad that you do acknowledge music as a form of healing because this week that's really what we've been yeah. delving into to see what kind of changes our lives along the way. Mm -hmm. And you've already touched on the depression that you had to overcome. I mean, I can't imagine having to leave your five darling children at home to go pursue a dream in Durban, you know, to, to yeah. be on Uzalo. How have you overcome that depression? <laughs> yeah. So cute. Um, I don't... I don't know if you ever overcome depression. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It is managed. Mm. You need a support system. You need to understand that you have to go for sessions. Oh, you wow. have to go to your psychologist for sessions. Mm. And um, even if it's not on a monthly basis, but now and again, do um, keep in touch with them because um, it's important to offload. But mm. Talk to somebody that is neutral, somebody that is not going to take your stuff now and tell it to their friend. Um, it's important. And they are, they, they are there because they are professional and they know how to deal with mm. people that suffer from depression. Yeah. 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 So that support system for me is very important. Yeah. Yeah. I absolutely love chatting to actresses. And, you know, there's, there's, there's this thing about acting where you look at an actress and they get, if you give two or three actresses the same yeah. script, they could probably um, translate it very differently or in a nuanced way. Um, but it's not just about how talented you are mm -hmm. at telling a story. There's something about actors or actresses that makes you want to just consume them, like just mm -hmm. watch them for mm -hmm. hours. Mm -hmm. What is what unique characteristic about your work do you think you present to your audience? I think with me, I am truly, I always say this, that, that we are all spirits having a human journey, mm -hmm. like a human experience. Um, and so because I am more spiritual than I am human, when I, when I have to portray a character, I guess, a new person is created altogether via my body, which is just a vessel. Yeah. And a new being has an opportunity to utilize this body to tell a story. 
So each individual character has their own individual life. I don't know if I'm making sense. Yes, you are. Yeah. And it, and I've had an opportunity to play different, two different powerful characters. And I know exactly what it feels like when this one arrives and when this one arrives. Wow. I know that when with Mangob, when I put the hair on, she, it's it's weird, but it's almost like she's here. Comes on. Mm. And then with Mazet, the minute I put that hat on, she's there. Wow. Even my walk changes as the, the, the as the minute wow. I have that that gear on. The minute I look like that, look at that, just, look at that transformation. That transformation. <laughs> so I I I think it is it is because I'm very in touch with myself spiritually. Yes. It is that that I Absolutely. can utilize yeah. the body as just a vessel. Yeah. Wow. Well, it's definitely hard to ignore the power and alpha women's women that you play, and I'm sure you are an alpha woman in real life too, honey. We see you and we salute you. Yeah, Thank absolutely. you so much. Yeah. You. I can tell you're going to do big things, great things. Big I appreciate things. that. I receive, I receive, I receive, I receive, I receive. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> Thank today. you so much. Thank you. So coming up after the break, we head over to the kitchen to make the best ever plant-based burger with Clem. Our guests on Afternoon Express fly domestically with Mango. Enjoy outstanding service, online check-in and seat selection. With the widest booking and payment options, Mango is the only airline globally to accept store charge cards as a means of payment. Fly in comfort with ergonomically efficient seats for more legroom aboard a fleet of new generation Boeing 737-800 aircraft. Join the guests of Afternoon Express and fly Mango.
A warm welcome back to you. You're watching Afternoon Express live on SABC3. Now, yesterday we showed you how to prepare a bunless burger, which was a treat. And now today we step it up a notch by putting together the best ever plant-based burger. This one is massive. So where do we begin? I mean, just look at that. That looks pretty crazy, doesn't it? It, it looks amazing. But I also just love that when you're making a plant-based burger, uh -huh. you, you, it's already guilt-free. Even when you're it making is. it, you just lie to feeling like, oh, I'm, yeah. I feel like I'm going to pig out, but it's got something <laughs> okay. super healthy. Absolutely. So let's get started. First things first, uh, police and I spoke about this yesterday. You cook these veggie patties as you would a normal, a normal meat, patty. meat patty. So you treat it like a piece of meat. The crust I usually is put a mine in the oven. You can do it in the yeah. oven? You know what? I'm wondering, can, could I pop that in the toaster? I actually, I have ones. And what, what was the result? It was great. So I don't know. Maybe it was great. Cheat. Yeah. Because some mornings I just I'm trying to make the boys something and uh -huh. I'm it's, I'm in a hurry and then I was just like, hey, I think this would go in the toaster. All right. So it's me... also not meat, so it's not going to like burn and and have a hmm. stench or. True whatever. story. I was going to put some of that into the pan to fry. I'll show you some of the olive oil. I'm happy with that. Textures, everything. So while we get our patties going, uh -huh. I want to grab our Cara sweet potato, which is that orange sweet potato in front of you, and then oh, this one. one of my biggest kitchen gadgets ever. Julian Peeler. You can totally use a knife if you've got some skills. Bunny, tell the truth. I Look know you this, have skills. Baby. But this is pretty oh, cool. So just like that. Nice and slow. And then you get these. These how, little toothpicks. How amazing is that? They call them matchsticks, hey. Julian. But matchsticks, yeah, little Match, tiny matchstick little shoe fry, strings. Matchstick fries. So all I do is get these guys. Yeah, this, yeah. this is gonna be like the crispy element of the burger along okay, with these okay. patties. Get that into some I really oil. like this. I actually want to have fun with it and I can just carry yeah. on while you fry. And they're very inexpensive as well. So yeah, you can like be gifting people with them. It feels a bit dangerous. No, not at all, because it's got a safety guard in it. So you're fine. So cool, that's gonna fry, that's gonna get crispy. Let me turn over our patties. Mine are so messed up, look at them. Now, anyway, I'm forget happy. that, forget that. What, what can I help you with? All right, so <laughs> let's talk. Let's, let's get these guys together. So as you mentioned, one of the things is that it's guilt-free, right? Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah. also, it's a great way to get kids eating, getting the nutrition yes. that they need. We know all the goodness that's in sweet potatoes. We know the vegetables. If you can actually get kids thinking yeah. this is a real good yeah. burger. Well, also what's happening with, with, I mean, that thing, the whole idea of tricking kids into eating mm -hmm. healthy is that their palate and their taste buds um, get used to it and they get a taste for it. Exactly. They and get a preference. They develop a preference for it. Even uh, so, even though they don't know that they're eating something healthy, after a while they don't mind eating something healthy because yeah. their bodies start craving healthier stuff. And right? they become adults that have great eating habits. And good choices. It starts Absolutely. now. Absolutely. It starts, it starts now. now. Let's go with this guy first. So I've got some yogurt and some pesto. You've toasted these and put butter on we them. We always toast the buns. There's never a time we don't. Ooh. Ever. No. Always. So I've got some pesto. I actually want to add more pesto. I just like the color that's on here. What did you add here? What's this? A bit of yogurt. Okay. A bit of pesto. A little bit of crunchita lettuce, just like that. Right. And then we're going to go. If, if Look, burgers are supposed to be messy, so that's fine. That's fine. A little bit of a patty. Bunny, would you sprinkle those fries on there for me? Absolutely. Those little crispy fries that we made. Did you, did you fry these in a shallow oil? Yeah, you could totally try baking them. Try baking it, I'm pretty sure you'll get a, like, a nice result as well. So how do you get them so crispy? They're that's very happens, crispy. That's what happens when you actually end up frying them. Okay. Then a little bit of this red pepper hummus. Ooh, just yummy. Like that. Those red radishes, can I get some hummus. of those radishes? You can get those at Woolies, really Can done. I just lay the, those on? Uh-huh, just like that. I love radish. And then what, I'm gonna treat the top of the bun with a little bit of the normal hummus. Almost on everything, yo. Almost on everything. Almost on everything, just like that. <gasps> okay, this is gonna be delicious. This is yeah. mouth-watering. Palissa delicious. called it. This is hers. This is hers. Oh, okay, I actually, is that what she was saying earlier? Okay, I won't touch it. <laughs> this is definitely a dish you're going to want to make. To get the ingredient list and the link to the recipe, simply SMS EAT to double three six five zero. The SMSs are charged at one rand fifty each, of course, and no free SMSs apply, unfortunately. And in case you missed any of this, here's a quick recap.
that burger looks dangerously delicious. And I shotgun it. It is mine. If anyone touches it in the kitchen, we're beefing. Good luck, girl. I just think you need to keep your eye on that burger. <laughs> so after the break, Chef Ayers in our kitchen um, turned bar counter. We're shaking up a delicious jam jar recipe using Manhattan rooibos lemon iced tea. Remember to head over to our social media and tell us what quality, what quality or talent you have that you wish you could explore more. Tweet us at Afternoon Chat using the official hashtag Afternoon Express or just comment on our Facebook page. See you after the break. There's a new face on Expresso, your number one feel-good breakfast show. I am Tabi Somakubela and join me with South Africa's favorite morning television family. Wake up, shake up and feel good with us for three hours of the best breakfast entertainment. Start your day the only way with us at Expresso Morning Show weekdays from 6 to 9 a.m. on SABC3. The, the stage, stage is, is yours. And yours. Enjoy full fruit flavour in salon or green tea varieties of Manhattan iced tea. Made with love by Clover. 
Welcome back from the ad break. You're tuned into Afternoon Express. So it's Thursday, Thursday, and about time that we taste some time out. So have a hashtag Roy moment with the refreshing mocktail in hand made with the Clover Manhattan Lemon Roy Boss. Join us by SMSing the keyword Clover to 33650 to get this mocktail recipe sent to you. SMSs are one round 50 each and no free SMSs apply. So Chef Aya, yes. we have just made a delicious scrumptious burger, but something has to go with the burger. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, we're together again for mm. our Thursday, Thursday, so we're going to be doing our lemonade gym jar. So yes. now to go with this, we're going to first, it's such a simple cocktail to make, it's a okay. mocktail, wait, sorry. So now you're just going to pour over your Manhattan clover, um, yeah, lemonade. Exactly. Perfect. So with that, you're gonna oh, freeze this see, in yeah. the yeah, you're gonna put this in the freezer for like an hour or two. So the idea is to just keep on checking on it every 30 okay. minutes to crush it down. So while this goes in the freezer, you're gonna have to roast your your, your lemons. So okay. the idea of getting the chard next to it, you want to get the nice bitterness from it. And also at the same time, by cooking while baking them in the oven, you yeah. get that nice juice out of it. So with, because the lemon has a lot of pores in it, you kind of okay. get all the juice out. So with that, we already have our frozen Yes, Manhattan lemon flavored bar. So after you've put it in the freezer, yeah. then it comes out looking a little something like that. Yes, that's okay. correct. Okay, perfect. You know, I was also so curious to why are we roasting something that we're still going to drink? So I'm um, thank, thank you for breaking it down. It's just the flavor. Oh, it's can, just, yeah, it's just the flavor. And also, it's flavor. so easy to get all the juice out because if you get a fresh lemon and squeeze it out, you kind of lose all the lemons because you end up throwing everything away. Oh, yes, that's so true. But if you kind of now warm it up or put it in the microwave for like two, two minutes, a minute and a half, you kind of yeah. get all the juice out. So if you're doing that, look how cool it looks. And someone's it's coming stars. around, so. It's ideal for I that little I squeeze it in summer. and then I put it in because I like my chardness to be in there and Come and it looks nicely. so festive. You yeah, always turn our Thursdays, thank you, Look always turn that. our Thursdays into such festive treats. Thank you so much for teaching us how to make this amazing mocktail. Cheers, cheers. cheers. <laughs> this mocktail is certainly a good idea that will set to impress your guests. Give them a go and just taste some time out with the new and delicious addition to the Clover Manhattan Roy Boss Ice Tea. In case you missed it, here's a recap. It tastes good, eh? It does. Mm. You haven't tasted it. Wow, Bale, what is happening here? I am learning so much in the kitchen, eating nyabong, Ganje, only. Nyabong. Pleasure. <laughs> Me and Chef Aya made us something a little refreshing to go with the weather outside. Mm. I think it's perfect for the Thursday. Is this a Thursday mocktail or a Friday? Is it a, it's a, a Friday drink or a Thursday drink? It's a Thursday drink because we still have work on Friday, but on Friday, girl, who knows what we can mix up in here. <laughs> uh -huh. Ching, ching. <laughs> So it's all about fashion after the break as we meet designers Unati and Talita Sotashe who have more than 10 years in the fashion industry. Plus more deliciousness coming up right after the break as we make a bean brownie. And trust us when we say healthy eating has never tasted so good. Enjoy full fruit flavour in salon or green tea varieties of Manhattan iced tea. Made with love by Clover.
Welcome back from the ad break. Now get ready for the hashtag for the love of winter, bean brownie. We know what you're thinking, beans in a brownie. But the truth is it tastes nothing like beans and everything like a mouth watering brownie. And the best part is that it's healthy and does not skimp on flavor. But for me, I think the cherry on top is that I'm back with my favorite chef, yes, Chef Aya yes, in the kitchen. Yes, yes. So we've had the burger, yeah. we've had the drinks, I yes. see, now time for something sweet, the dessert. Actually, we just had the whole three course, the whole three course but all meal. the other way around. Thank so you now for helping we, us prepare. Awesome. <laughs> so now we're making our bean brownie. So um, it's quite easy and it's so simple. And the reason why we're using our beans is just to replace the flour, okay. you know, the gluten from it. And now getting this from our rose quality flavor like it's so beautiful and so nice so with that i'm going to be putting everything on my grinder so i'm very skeptical right now that's why my I face is looking some type of way because beans in a brownie in replacement for flour I, i'm so confused but i'm just going to watch the pro do it because yeah. that's why okay, cool. i'm not I'll a chef. explain later so now i have my baked um, beans now from rose the quality they, they have like the good quality yeah okay. so i'm adding my oatmeal in there i'm going to be adding my cinnamon there i mean now who doesn't okay, love so, cinnamon so far we've put the beans yes. and then we put are those oats yeah that's oatmeal oatmeal, oatmeal. yeah and, and then, then we, we put the cinnamon exactly so i'm okay. putting i'm going in with my coconut oil now and the coconut oil does it matter if it's still in its harder form or can it we it doesn't matter because now because we're using it for the flavor and also to smoothen out the baking process of it oh, so it doesn't matter okay. and then i'm going to add in my coconut now to also give it that nice brown flavor to it you know yeah, me. i mean if you love chocolate. your chocolate you'll understand why i have cocoa in there and then i'm going to put in my baking powder okay, so this perfect. is going to be a nice mix and that's honey. Yes, to give you that nice natural flavor to it. And that, that sweetness. sweetness. Yeah. Uh -huh. Touch white, the lucky yes. smile. And we're matching today. I don't know if you guys picked that up because we are matching. It's like we. we I feel here. like you're stalking me. I'm not stalking you, Aya. <laughs> okay, so we have to blend everything until yeah, it's it as smooth as it, it needs to, to be. Depending on how you like the texture in your mouth of a brownie or something sweet. So now the idea is to get that roughness to it. So I'm going to do okay. it like for like less than two minutes. Okay. You know, so I also like the texture of it all in my mouth. Mm. So now I'm gonna be adding this mixture into my chocolate chips. Okay. So the chocolate chips go in after we've after, blended, yeah. not after, before after. or during. Because it's kind of nice to get that nice, you know, when you're baking it, you get that mm. nice gooeyness from the dough. And also when you're baking your brownie while it's still hot, you kind of get that ooziness from the chocolate chips because oh, yes. nothing happened to them. They still like raw and then they still like whole. Perfect. Oh, I can't wait to have Do a taste. Do you want to mix that for me? Of course I will. Go for gold. Yes. Ah, oh, the honey smells so good. The honey is definitely seeming like the champion here, but I know that the true leader of us all is this Rhodes Quality Beans. And it's so easy to open, and it's made from, like, what? The freshest of vegetables. Nice. It is so great. Yeah, and what I also like about the Rhodes Quality cans... Let me help you that, with that. Thank you, that they're easy to open. So yeah. they come in this, uh, just the pull seal, so we don't have to be struggling with a can opener all the time, which is That's a nightmare. Safe. That's safety. Safety first. Safety first all so the time. So now I'm putting this in my baking tray. Make sure it's very lined, very properly and you put in the oven for 20 minutes nice uh, it doesn't even look like there's like beans in there it doesn't look like it actually just looks like the straight up brownie i feel like it's all camouflaged it's all a trick it's not a trick it's what we do in the kitchen <laughs> okay so how long do we put this in the oven so you for? put this in like for 20 minutes in the oven 15 to 20 minutes okay and then you just also have to have a toothpick the idea that well the trick is to have a toothpick you just Squeeze it in there, and then the minute it comes up with more dough, that means it's not ready. Okay. So whenever you poke your dough and then you come up with nothing, then it's ready. Love the tricks of the trade. Thank you so much, guys. Remember to get this mouth-watering uh, bean brownie. SMS the keyword Rhodes to 33650. Uh, VAS rates apply. T's and C's apply. And visit afternoonexpress.co.za. And just in case you missed it, here's a quick recap.
tune in next week because we'll be announcing the two roads quality hashtag for the love of winter competition finalists that Zola has selected who now stand a chance to win the 100,000 Rand grand prize. Roads quality for the love of winter. Following in the footsteps of their grandmother, Unati and Talita Sotasha have been sewing clothes since the age of four. After working in retail, they decided to start their own fashion label called Dear Mzanzi and are ready to take over the fashion world head, um, to head up the street-inspired wear. You guys are so inspirational right now. And what a unique pairing, an aunt and a niece. We're so used to the mother-daughter dynamic or like the mother-granddaughter yeah, dynamic or, friends, yeah. or friendships yeah. in business. But how does this dynamic work so beautifully? Um, it works very well, uh, but sometimes because she's, she's my niece, she's still a kid. And, um, <laughs> you know, when it comes to time management, I always have to say, Talita, we need to do this. And she's like, oh, I think we still have time. <laughs> And I'm like, no, we don't have time. We need to push. So I think that's been the challenge working with her. But I love every minute of it. And I feel like she's, you know, she's learning a lot from me as much as I'm learning a lot from her. That's beautiful. Yeah. Are, we, are you guys wearing your own garments that you've made? Um, I'm currently she, wearing one. She is. And I'm wearing um, from my sister's boutique. Yeah, so this dress is from my sister's boutique. So, well. so your whole mm. family is in fashion. Yes. Yeah. You're just a fashion family. Yes. I absolutely love your stuff. Thank what inspires you. your idea of the of, of what your clothes need to look like. Every time you sit down to design, do you have maybe a few buzzwords or mm. a feeling or a core message that you want to always come through your stuff? Well, for us, it's um, it has to do with uh, the nature and the the whole creative buzz around um, South Africa because we we like to to incorporate more uh, South African feels. So it's, it, it's elegant, it's natural, it's creative, it's culture um, orientated because we have different types of cultures in yeah. South Africa. So I think that's one of the things that makes us have an inspiration or playground mm. to start Absolutely from. beautiful. Yeah. And kicking off the whole journey into fashion, a matriarch of your family, your grandmother, was the one who started off by Uktonga. Yeah. yeah. How, mm -hmm. how was the beautiful granny? How, how does she feel? Um, she's very proud. She's mm. very proud. Um, she's got five girls. And um, when I said I wanted to study fashion, she was, you know, she was like, at least someone's going to start following my, <laughs> in my footprints. And she always says, you know, when I bought these machines, I always wanted someone to actually take Aww. over, you know. And, um, and I remember my older sister, when she wanted to study fashion, my mother was like, no, you're not going to study. You need to go to school. That's school, crazy. You know? And then when I said I wanted to, you know, to study fashion, she's like, please go for it. You know, I wouldn't want this to just like disappear mm. from the family. And that's when it started, because even when it comes to Talita getting inspired and getting into the fashion industry. Yeah. When my mom used to go and buy fabric, she would yeah. take her with, you yeah. know. She would be sitting in piles of fabrics, fabric. like yeah. sourcing fabrics with my yeah. grand, wow. with my mother, with her grandmother. Mm -hmm. So it really just like, it's really from my mother. Yeah. Even yeah. just like working from the fashion show to some of these items, she was mm -hmm. there helping. She's yeah. our biggest critique. That's yes. amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. I mean, your workmanship is absolutely extraordinary. And I'm actually just looking at the detail on yeah. even the dress that you're wearing. It's, it's very specific. Mm. What, how do you turn such th this beautiful brand that you've built into a business, a lucrative business? See, that's actually where we want to take the business to. Because I, I, you know when you are a fashion student, you graduate and then you you think everything is just going to go like yeah. according to your plans. Yes. And it really doesn't. Like mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, it's hard work to just get in mm -hmm. there. But I've just always known that I didn't want to work for anyone, you mm -hmm. know. And um, so now it's really trying to get to a point where we do production and we, we make clothes. I don't want to make beautiful clothes and they're sitting in my wardrobe or in studio. No, yeah. I, I need to sell them. Mm -hmm. And I think one of um, my, our biggest dream with DM Zanti is, um, is for the items to be available, you know, in, in retail stores because it's, I feel like it's talking a lot to Zanzi, to yes. our East South Africans. Yeah. So we want to say, Dear Zanzi, 
we're here. We bring you beautiful items, like just like very simple pieces, but that just you, you can wear them anytime. Mm. And it's that unique name, like Dear Mzansi. You're basically writing a love letter, a love letter. through, yeah. through yes. fashion yeah. to the, the, the country of South Africa. So we appreciate that. Thank but you. how does your signature look like? How does your looks scream South African so that if we bump into each other in Berlin, how do I know that? Yeah, this has got Firstly, Dan's anti mm. it's elegance. We want to keep it clean because, I mean, every South African woman I know with different styles, they always have their own elegance and feel mm. to them. So firstly, it's elegance and also the culturally vibe, which is the prints. We like to use a lot of prints to the, to the, to the designs. So yeah, it's prints, clean, elegance, and it really needs to show the woman's body, you know. Proper way. Wow, so, yeah. I absolutely love it. And you've brought some beautiful garments with you. I got Thank a glimpse you. of them earlier, and I think I'm taking all of them home. <laughs> but um, you can talk us through this one, this jumpsuit that you have here. Okay, so that jumpsuit wow. is actually um, a satin jumpsuit. Very, I mean, it's it's such a simple cut, and we just uh, which you can wear with flats, with you know, just as an, uh, for a night out. So. That for me resembles a woman of any size. Any, oh, any yeah. woman, I was know? actually about to ask it's that. So beautiful. That jumpsuit looks amazing mm. on the model, but she's a lot taller than I am. I'm a, I'm a pretty petite girl. Would it look as good? Would you recommend it for it a short would. Maybe what we could also do, like if we had to change it, then um, the, the legs wouldn't be so, so wide, wide so yes. they don't disappear, oh, you know, yes. on the jumpsuit. But still, the cut, the very simple cut, yeah. this would work perfectly. But then when it comes to the legs, we wouldn't do it so wide. Yeah. So do you guys make custom designs then? Yes, we yes. do. Oh, nice. Yes, That's ideal. That's beautiful. So I love it. Where, where do you mostly source your fabrics? Locally? Uh, yes, locally. Yes. Okay. Yeah, mostly, mostly locally. Yeah. Um, but Cape Town, I still find it. It's it, it's it's the best place. So I'm, I'm based in Joburg, and I always ask my mom what fabrics are in Cape Town, and yeah. she always sends bo um, boxes of oh, fabrics. Yeah, wow. to this Joburg. This is look gorgeous. So I see the femininity, the colors that you use, the play with pattern and textures. I'm just so intrigued by it. I can look at the, I can look at her from her I absolutely yeah. love this. Yeah, so that look is actually inspired by my love for travel, uh, for travels. I was in Uganda last year, and that fabrics, I uh, actually sourced them from Uganda, from Uganda. So um, I love that print. That fabric has been sitting there, but it was just waiting for the right moment. And when this came, I was like, I need to make that. It's look. so beautiful. I also love how when she puts her hand in her pockets, mm -hmm. it like takes on a different shape. Yes, right? yes, it's yes, so yes gorgeous. thank you. Yeah. And you spoke about living in Joburg, but oh, Talita was here in Cape Town. How did you make the distance work? Well, um, she has her own machines and stuff in Joburg, mm -hmm. and I use my grandmother's ones. Yeah. So we usually talk on um, WhatsApp, WhatsApp video Instagram, chat. video chat. Thank anything. goodness for technology. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And yeah. the nice thing is that with Unati, we have similar styles, a bit of similarity. So when we, when someone else has a concept, it's not very hard for and not the other far person out, yeah. yes, to understand. To understand. To it. It. Yeah. Yeah. I nice. absolutely love it. So, so do you do you sew? everything yourselves or do you kind of outsource the sewing we sew, sew everything. everything ourselves wow. yeah wow yeah, we sew everything, everything. ourselves uh, but we'd love to outsource at some point when you do bigger productions because yeah. yes. the quality is also much better when you, you know when you outsource absolutely yeah. now i see a fun flirty vibe going on over there how, how, and Victorian uh, with the bodice. Yes, I love that dress. Also, um, you know, it's fine, very fine polka dots, uh, very 80s, but then you, polka, you can never, they can never go out of style. You know, that frill, that whole look, um, it, it can never go out of style. So I love that dress, yeah. She seems like she's having wedding. the time of her life, and I would too. <laughs> and I would too in that dress. This Thank is you. spectacular. Showstopper. <laughs> okay, so this one is inspired by the Cossa Bride with the black and white feel of it. Um, it's very uh, elegant, very clean, and since it's going to be like wedding seasons now, we decided to make uh, this piece. Yeah. It's beautiful.
And it's got pockets. Yes. 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 My mother believes in pockets. Oh, yeah. Every I day believe, she makes, yeah. she's like, you need to put pockets. Yeah. I, I love like, dresses yeah. with pockets. I feel like I should be part of their family because I believe in pockets too, in anything. Yes. You slip yourself in and your keys yeah. in it mm. and your lip gloss and you're good to go. Yeah. Mm. And it's just attitude. This is like feisty attitude yeah. in pockets. Yeah, Bonnie, I definitely see you in that last dress. Oh, yeah. I see me in all of them. I see okay. them in all of them. Thank you so much for coming today. Yes, guys, thank you so much for showing us your amazingly, authentically South African DM Zanzi designs. I mean, this is streetwear and high fashion all rolled up. And uh, auntie and niece duo, you guys are so inspirational. Thank you. Thank you. Expect a call from me. I'll be ordering a few pieces. Thank you. So today's guests are true testament to the saying, a dream delayed is not a dream, is a dream, not a dream deferred rather. After the break, they share tools that you can use while waiting for your dreams to become a reality. Welcome back from the ad break. You're tuned into Afternoon Express on SABC3, where the stage is yours. Now we're sitting down with the three amazing women, the, the true stars of the show, Udon, Unati, and Utalita, who are true inspirations and the epitome of what we're celebrating in this Women's Month. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. We want to know, there's so many little girls at home watching today and who aspire to possibly be where you guys are now. What would your message be to that young girl? In the different spheres, obviously. 
<laughs> okay. Um, I always encourage young people to stay in school. I know it sounds redundant. I know everybody says it, but it's the truth. Stay in school, complete that grade 12, and then look for something to study because when you have a talent, you need to enhance that talent. You need to get more skills to improve that talent. It's not just about talent. Mm. And then you have to be patient. I know that it might also sound cliche that you must be patient, but you must. You have to be patient. You have to be because you will slit your wrists mm -hmm. if you want things to happen in your time. Because some things are, are, are waiting for you in, in maybe 10 years to come because you need to be prepared to get to that place. So be patient, wait, because everything, everything in good timing. Wow, that is so superb. I mean, mm. it's, it's really beautiful advice. And also people don't understand that being patient is also not just sitting and yeah. waiting. Yeah. It's that process where you actually prepare and ready yes. yourself for yes. the stream that you want yes. and you keep developing yourself and grooming yes. yourself. And most importantly, sorry, emotionally, yeah. psychologically, yeah. and not just, you know, you, you might be thinking just my talent is ready, is ready. Be ready in yes. all ways. Mentally, wow. you need to be strong. In this industry that we're in, it's tough. Yeah. So you need to be strong. You cannot just crumble. You need to have coping mechanisms. Yeah, and what I like about that is that, especially with my generation, it's the popcorn generation, instant gratification yeah. generation, yeah. where you yeah. feel like, I've been doing it for five minutes, so yeah. I'm done. You have to yeah. keep at yeah. it. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Absolutely. And yeah. wait for your blessing. Be prepared whilst yeah. waiting. Very true. Mm. Yeah. From you, ladies? Um, I would say that, uh, you know, when you have that dream, just keep talking about it. Mm. Just never let it die, you know. Um, just keep talking about it, you know, so that even if you are stuck in a job that you hate so much, um, do that job the best, like give it your, your all, because mm. that also, you can take that into your own dream, into your own business one day. So yeah. just keep the dream the dream going and, st you know, keep talking about it. That's what I'm, yes. because I, when I was stuck in, in, in retail, I kept saying, I need to do this because this is what I love. Like, I love this, I love this. And mm. I kept talking yeah. about it. But every time I talk about it, someone is listening, someone is saying, go and do this. You know, they give me opportunities. So just keep talking yeah. about it. You never know who's listening. Yes, yeah. for sure. Yeah, and the university. And yourself, young lady. For me, it's all about starting now, if you can. Just start and do whatever that you can. And also have patience, as they said. Like, perseverance is the most important thing. And don't get caught up in whatever else, whatever everyone else is doing. Mm. Just make sure it fulfills you and you want to reach your goal, so just go for it. If you can start now, just start. Start as soon as possible. Yeah. Amen. It's all such amazing advice. And Thank you so much. I've, I'm so moved. I almost want to ask you the same question, Bonnie. About what to do you're, while you're, wait, you're, waiting you're waiting for your dream. And I guess here, here's, here's what I've learned, is that a dream, like we said earlier, a dream delayed is not a dream deferred. Mm. The answer is never really no. It's either not now, or um, in a while, crocodile. Yeah. <laughs> Basically the same thing. But, but here's what people need to understand. I call that dream waiting period, like a wilderness period. While you're in that wilderness period, digging and mining for your dream, looking yes. for clues mm. as to what direction to take, you've got to keep yourself alive. Mm. You can't yes. die there. Yes. You can't die there. And by the time your dream comes to fruition, you can't be found lacking in any way. Mm. So there's, there's almost a test in that waiting mm. time to actually see what to actually find inside yeah. of you mm. because you are the dream. Amen. The dream is not going to come and complete you. Yeah. You are the dream. So when the dream finally meets you, mm. you're a match. You're a perfect match. You are ready yeah. mentally, physically yeah. and spiritually. Yeah. I really Absolutely. do believe the same. Yeah. So whilst waiting, be thankful. Mm -hmm. Be thankful. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank I know you. you guys have a lot of things to do going forward, but Dawn, I have to find out what's the next step. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus on my music because I, I feel that I've neglected it and in turn I've, I've neglected a part of my spirituality. Yeah. So I had a performance on the 10th um, of this month at the Playhouse and the turnout was amazing. Hallelujah. And so I'm gonna keep having more and I think I have a date at Winnie's in Joburg. 
uh, for the 22nd of September. That's amazing. So I'll be performing there. So I'm going to, I believe in live performance. Yeah. So I'm going to do more of those wherever I possibly can. Wonderful. Mm. Can't wait to catch up with you ladies on social media. I'll be following every single move and keeping you to your word of striving and always doing the best. Thank you so much. And being your best. Thank, thank you. you. Wow, to you at home, thank you so much for joining us today and staying tuned. And join us again tomorrow as we meet legendary singer and songwriter Steve Kekana, who has over 20 albums to his credit. He's also received the Lifetime Achievement Award at this year's Summers. Plus, we have actors Duncan Johnson and Siputla Sibokhodi, who star in the all-new local drama that premiered last night on SABC3 called The Docket. It's quarter to the weekend, as I said. So, guys, <laughs> eat happily. God, good night, and God bless. Bye. Bye. <laughs>